for a blessing on the sermon. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. And seeing the multitudes, he had compassion on them, because they were distressed and lying like sheep that have no shepherd. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's Gospel is chosen for the Feast of St. Alphonsus, who founded the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer in order to succor the most abandoned who were the shepherds in the hillside of the country around Naples. And exactly as our Lord saw the great multitude and had compassion on them, St. Alphonsus had great compassion on the shepherds who were ignorant of the faith. And St. Pius X says that most souls go to hell through ignorance. And the consequence of, of that is that when we know our faith, when we've learned our catechism as children, have developed it as we've grown older, we're able to defend ourselves against the attacks upon our faith. And therefore, knowledge helps for salvation. And as St. Alphonse saw, the ignorance of the shepherd people would lead them to ruin. So it is the Feast of St. Alphonsus, and I wondered what to preach. And what came to me was the example of what happened in the life of St. Alphonsus. We know that he was a brilliant person. He had a mind which was absolutely extraordinary, able to remember just about everything that he read and was able to recall it when he was writing his spiritual works without making just about a single mistake in his quotes. At the age of 16, he was a doctor of both civil and church law. A 16-year-old, a doctor of civil law and church law. In that time, it was a very difficult thing. The law was so complicated, so many different kingdoms united to make up this complex law that ruled in the country of Naples. And yet he was a doctor. And he was a brilliant lawyer, able to win every single case that he undertook. But what happened? He was defending a case in which he had studied it completely. He knew exactly how to defend the case. He wouldn't take on a case unless he knew he could absolutely win. And he gave out his argument to totally floor the opposition. And they came up with a statement and said, you haven't read this. And basically, the reason was that St. Alphonse had studied everything. He didn't make a mistake. It was first understood that perhaps he made a mistake and was overwhelmed by his error. But what he saw was that no matter how much he spoke the truth and defended the person, they were not going to let him win. And so he was disgusted by the injustice of this all and those famous words that he uttered, world, I know you now, world, you shall see me no more. And that was it. He left a brilliant career as a lawyer to go into the service of God. He was a nobleman. He wore a sword on his side. He placed at Our Lady's feet and gave his life to God. A conversion, if you like. He was already a very holy 
person. He had a great love for our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. He had a great love for our Blessed Mother Mary. But he was in the world. And so now he left the world. And he said, world, I know you now. You are a deceiver. You tell lies. You are a master that promises great things, and yet you do not deliver. And so the question is, when will we truly, from the bottom of our hearts, be convinced and be able to say, world, I know you now. World, you shall see me no more. And that doesn't mean that we have to, each and every single one of us, leave the world and join a monastery. Or leave and become a priest or a religious. Or give ourselves totally to a life in the desert. But we have to leave the world. We have to know the world. We have to despise the world. And we have to leave the world all the same. Especially with our hearts. And St. Alphonsus then became this total and absolute convinced person of the necessity of salvation. You have to read his works, you hardly have to read any of his works to understand the great desire that he had for our salvation, for the salvation of souls. That's all that mattered to him. From now on, he was given to the glory of God. That was all that mattered to him, to give glory to God by saving souls. And his works are just replete with all possible examples of how the world is a deceiver, how we can be trapped by the world, and how to combat the world and live for God. So he knew what the world was. He was brilliant. As I say, he was a nobleman. It wasn't easy for him to follow his vocation. His father wanted him to be one of the greatest lawyers of the city. He wouldn't just allow his son to become a simple priest. He had to be a bishop. He had to be great. And so St. Alphonse had to fight for his vocation. And fight he would until he became the great saint that he was. So it was his love for God. His understanding of God being infinite, creating us out of love, and the necessity that we are in to return that love to God. St. Alphonsus just talks about the love of God the whole time, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ who dies on the cross. He wrote the book on the Passion, which explains all the different sufferings of our Lord for love of us. And that's, that's his theme. It's just the love of God for us and the love that we must have for him. And he would instill that love into our hearts. So Alphonsus is a wonderful saint. What a great privilege to have him as our founder in lineage and our special patron. He is a glorious saint, a doctor of the church, patron of confessors and moralists. You'd hardly know it. So few people speak about it. Even in the seminaries, he is ignored and put aside, and yet he is as great as St. Thomas, equal in many ways, and perhaps greater in different ways. So he had a passion for the salvation of souls. He was totally given to it. And as today's gospel said, our Lord had mercy on the multitude and St. Alphonsus had mercy on the multitude. So he left the great cities and he went out into the countryside to preach to those poor shepherds, ignorant men, people who were despised. The priests of Naples despised the poor and the rugged. They preferred the rich and the gentry. So St. Alphonse had a great love. And we must, as redemptors, have a great love for souls. 
for the poor souls, for the most abandoned souls. That is our vocation, to have a love for the most abandoned souls. And who are the most abandoned but those who have left the faith, those who do not have the faith. So we join once again in the pilgrimage, the two shrines pilgrimage, making its way from Dunfernden this morning, although it's dark and night outside, this, the moon is has risen, it's almost a full moon, to begin the second day, praying for the conversion of Scotland. May she return to the faith. Why? Because there is that terrible, terrible reality which St. Alphonse has had before his eyes so often of an eternity of separation from God, an eternity of hell. And that no one is sure of their salvation. No one can say, I will be saved. We hope, we pray for salvation, but no one knows whether they will be saved or lost. And his ejaculate prayer, you could say favorite, which he said so often, is, oh, my God, do not send me to hell. Oh, my God, do not send me to hell. And we could pray that prayer truly to God. We deserve hell if you committed one single mortal sin. We should have been in hell with that one sin. And perhaps we've committed a multitude of sins. And so we deserve hell. And so we can say to God, even as a friend, and beg him, oh my God, do not send me to hell. Do not allow me to go to hell. I want to love you with all my heart. I want to praise your mercy for eternity. And that is the work that St. Alphonse has had, and that should be the work of every priest, every redemptorist, every son of the Most Holy Redeemer. So, Again, we wish you well on your way. Praying for the conversion of Scotland. And we unite our prayers from here, the other side of the world. A joy for us to be united to you spiritually. Kind of strange speaking into a camera being recorded and being listened to on the other side of the world. That's one of the amazing things of the world we live in today. Thanks be to God for it that we can be therefore united in not so much, not only in intention, which is absolute, but even to see the video live stream of the Mass that is being offered here in uh, Kakahu, Mount St. Joseph. May our Blessed Lady obtain for us the grace to remain faithful unto the end. And may she also obtain especially the grace of conversion of so many souls who are on their way to perdition, that they may turn away from their error and return to the faith and love our Lord Jesus Christ with all their hearts and love our Blessed Lady, who is the Mother of God, the Mediatrix of all graces, she who has obtained for us through her prayers, through her suffering, the graces we need to persevere. She was united with our Redeemer. She is Codentrix. May she obtain for us that crown of all graces to get to heaven and to praise and sing God's mercies forever. In the name of the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you.